Okay, my friends, I am back. I know I said that I wasn't going to show this on camera, but I thought, you know, why not? So I've heated up my iron and I'm just simply going to press my pieces. Make sure my set that aside, and as you can see, it's it left a little bit of a mark right there on my wool, but that will quickly disappear. It's just the press mark. Not a big deal. Make sure your pieces are shiny side down. And that you don't lose them. It can be quite the challenge. I tend to lose things, especially tiny template pieces. Okay. And as you can see, you don't really, well, maybe you can't see, but hopefully you can tell that I'm not really even pressing with any heft, 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 any strength. I'm just press and lift, press and lift. Turn this so I don't end up burning myself. I really need to get one of those nice pressing mats that they have. <coughs> one moment, let me grab a drink. <coughs> While I'm standing up, I'll pull these over because that'll be a little bit easier. get them initially ironed down and then I'll go back and press with a l just a tiny bit more strength just so I can make sure that everything is really ironed down because you don't, the last thing you want is as you're trying to cut out your piece you don't want it to be slip sliding all over the place coming unglued it, that isn't fun all right, let me move this out of the way. I don't care for the smell this creates. <clears throat> I really need to put a placemat down because that really isn't um, good for my antique oak, oak table at all. I mean, I have my towel, towel layered, but the table did feel a little bit steamy. Sorry. Okay, hopefully that's not causing you issues seeing that glare. Let me shut this light off because it tends to make quite the glare. All right, and there you can see we have our pieces all laid out. And we are ready for cutting out. I'm going to lay <clears throat> my one of my background pieces down so that you don't get the glare and I can turn my light back on. <clears throat> Let me get 
go. Let me get resituated. Sorry for seeing my hand there, but I... The light sure picks up on everything, and Oliver James's hair is everywhere. We've got our abundance of pieces here. I will grab my scissors and we can get busy cutting out. Apologize, I just need to move my this a little bit more. I can be somewhat <laughs> um, anal with all of this, and if it's just not at the right angle, it stresses me. This is coming loose just a bit. There we go. All right, now I think we might have it in the proper screen. <clears throat> Hopefully I can edit that out. If not, I apologize. Okay. I'm gonna use my large shears for this large piece. And you just simply cut out right on the edge of your template. What's nice is when you iron your wool, it is initially a, just a tiny bit stiffer. At least I find it to be. And that really helps when you go to cut it out. Hopefully I'm staying in the camera screen for you to see. And there we have one coat piece. Now I leave these attached for now. Save my scraps in my little scrap basket. These little scissors cut so easily. I find it hard to cut with small shears because just my hands, my older hands, tend to cramp up. So it's nice when <coughs> you have a pair that grabs a hold of the wool and you don't have to take longer than necessary. Oh, tiny boots. Goodness gracious. After this Stitch With Me series is over with, you'll find me working on nothing but big projects because I'll be so tired of tiny, tiny template pieces. They are definitely more of a challenge. More to think about than just the larger pieces that all the details don't matter as much and you don't need to worry about keeping the shape. You can play around with a little bit more freely when you're trying to bring a specific template with smaller pieces. It just tends to be a little bit more thought provoking, I guess a little bit more thought. <coughs> Gosh, that little boot is tiny. Let's do this red bag. Gosh, I just love this red. Red is one of my favorite colors.
take that off. I apologize if I'm moving in and out of the screen. Sometimes I forget and I have to pull it close to myself to see it and then I forget that I've probably pulled it out of the screen. Remember when we were young and <laughs> our hands just did exactly what we wanted them to do and it was never an issue? Now I find as I get older, my hands just don't cooperate as much. <clears throat> Sometimes I, I have difficulty picking, separating pieces of paper or picking paper up. Remember when that used to just be something that you didn't even have to think about? Gosh, the things that you don't realize you might lose as you, as you age. Gosh, these scissors are nice. Can't say that enough. Look at that lovely bag. Find the mitten. I guess I'll flip these over so we can see the colors. Not that it really matters because we're going to put everything together, but. See what I mean? It's like, okay, I just had a hold of the darn thing, but now I can't seem to turn it back over. I feel like this was a little bit wasteful where I placed my wool for the mitten. I should have been a little bit more conscious of that. I don't like to waste my wool, especially my reds. Finding a good red is hard. I'm gonna have to keep those flipped over until I'm done cutting them out because <clears throat> I feel like if I don't, I'm gonna throw the wrong ones away. I'm going to have to create a project where I use this old straw because it is gorgeous. See, I should have placed these closer to the edge. I was a bit wasteful on my wool. I typically try not to do that.
All right, our template pieces are cut out. Next up, we'll lay everything out and get our placement correct. Okay, I just realized that I never cut the arm out of the army green wool, so let me do that now. Next up, we are going to lay everything out on our background. I like to, before I start pinning and gluing and stitching, of course, I will center everything and lay everything out onto my background exactly where it is going to be once I stitch, just to make sure that everything is as it should be. And everything butts up against each other nicely and lines up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just making sure everything's in the screen. <clears throat> I don't um, pull my freezer paper off until I am to this point as I'm laying things down. I tend to take my template. And pretty much center it as I want it. The top of the hat is that length, the feet are that length. So we are pretty much going to have our arm be there. But I think what I'll do is. <coughs> goodness, excuse me, the wool dust. I'm going to fold this, find the center of my wool. Now what you can do is you can just try to eyeball it, but I like to take a pin, pop it right in there. Then I need to decide if this is going to be my background or if this is. Shake it because it's got feathers and fuzz on it. I think this side is going to be it. Okay, move that over there. Pardon me while I blow my nose. All right, so here's my center, which if I was to eyeball that, that would not look like the center to me. And that's approximately where the arm is going to be. Now, of course, we're not gluing any of these pieces down, so we don't have to, that nothing's set in stone until we actually stitch it down. So I keep, I'm just going to move these things up here off my template because I reference my template a lot. And you'll simply just carefully peel your freezer paper from your wool. I don't just yank. Number one, you cannot just yank with small pieces because it would tear them to shreds. But um, number two, it just it makes for less fuzziness if you do it slowly. I wish you'd just grab a hold of this and pull it off very quickly. It would cause a, create a lot of fuzz on my wool and I don't like frayed pieces or fuzzy pieces. All right, let's see. As you can see, <laughs> he's so cute. As you can see, that is, seems to pretty much line up with, is it like this? Nope, is it? No, it's like this. It seems to pretty much line up with my lines, although I do see that I 
might have an issue. Hopefully you can see my finger right about here, but we will see. I'm just going to temporarily place that right there. Remove my center pin, of course. Now he isn't going to be direct dead center, probably most likely because <clears throat> his bag goes kind of far in the back. So he might need to be a little bit this way and a little bit further down. So a little to the left and a little bit more down from the center. So lower left, really not dead center, but it's always, always, always good to get your center situated to begin with. Okay. I generally don't reuse my pieces of um, freezer paper. They say that you can. I keep them for their shape and possibly to retrace, but I don't usually reuse them. All right. I, <clears throat> I kind of like measure. I use my finger ruler and somewhat refer and this is going to be angled up a little bit we can get everything in place and then move it around as we see fit. I'm sure my arm going in and out of the screen is causing issues. I apologize. It tries to focus every time my arm comes into the picture. Trying to keep these together and close enough where you can see. Trying not to lose pieces. I'm notorious for that. Okay. This one will lay on here like this. Now remember, our pieces are going to butt up against each other. Ugh. I have a habit of sitting with my left leg tucked behind my right one, and then I'll, I sit there for a few minutes and I find myself in pain. I'm going to clean up this edge. I just feel like it's a little jagged. Hopefully I didn't just ruin my lineup. I think they are going to butt up against each other nicely. When we stitch. I love those two colors together. Green and ivory are just so beautiful. Now we have our collar. It's an extra face piece, I don't know. See, it's handy to have your template nearby because you can't always tell by looking at something which way it faces. Now, when I first started to do this, I thought that many things were going to overlap. <laughs> And now I feel like they're not. At first, see, I thought that it would look good overlapping, but I just, I don't, I don't think that now. I feel like everything needs to just butt up against each other. And looking at this, at this moment, I feel like this is too far over to the left, but we have to get our bag on there, excuse me, before we can determine whether it is properly laid out. 
trying to keep my arm out of there as much as I can. <clears throat> Go at it strategically so it doesn't. Hmm, I, I really think I could have made that a little bit longer, but I also feel like I can shift this entire piece over a little. And now when you do this yourself, <clears throat> once you get everything in place, step back. Like even lay it on the floor. You know, I really like these scissors for cutting things out, but I feel like they leave things a little bit. Yes, that will appear. I think I just need to trust that when I get it stitched together, That's just too thin. It needs to butt up against each other. I guess I probably could have made this collar piece a little bit wider. But it's going to be okay. And then we have the pocket that will go right here. And then the tree is going to stem stitch out. Okay. Let's get our cuff and mitten in place. <coughs> and here we have our little boots. Let's see if I can manage to do this without having a boot come up missing. So far, every time I've laid this out, I've, a boot has turned up missing. I'm pretty sure he's got to move down. He's up too high. See why this is important to take the time to work all this out and make sure everything is laid out nicely. I mean, maybe it's just me, but this process takes, takes me a little while. And we won't know if he's in the right place until we get his head and hat situated. <laughs> Cute feet. I know I could have labeled things huh. that's a little bit too curvy you know I might not end up liking these scissors as well as I thought I would it doesn't seem to want to round things very well 
I don't, sorry, I don't want to hold that over my background because it'll just make a ton of little fuzzies. All right, let me see. Is this piece? It must be. I must not have cut this out very well. Because clearly it's his cuff. There we go. I'm going to do a little bit better with the mitten and create more of a thumb. Let's hope. Just because he holds the string, the sack, um, well, handle, string, whatever, <laughs> the end of the bag. I might need to <clears throat> take this arm and cuff and mitten from my other these are my originally cut out ones and I feel like they're a little bit better and I don't know why but I feel like these are too short. This mitten is fine. I just feel like I really did not do justice with my cuff here. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna have to put a little screen note on for everyone that perhaps make your arm longer. And then the cuff can simply overlap the two. All right, let's set this guy aside if we can. I don't know if you can hear that, but Oliver is dreaming in the next room and he's growling and barking and <laughs> having a grand old time. All right, so this is where, well, for now, I'm going to wait to put those pins in. Yes, definitely make your sleeve a little bit longer, I think. This is going to obviously this is going to be on top of these pieces. I'm just trying to decide if I want I think I want my cuff to overlap like that. And then the mitten right there. That mitten is not very well done. It's going to have to work. It looks odd, but I think once I get it stitched down and then okay. 
okay? <clears throat> all right, now for the beard. I'm just making sure I have my all my pieces. So the beard will come. <clears throat> Just above the hand, seems like it's got to be a little bit higher <coughs> because, as you can see. These two meet about a quarter of the way up the beard. So that is probably right, right there. That came off easily. Let's get our face in place. The face, oh, okay. If you're using old straw, pull that off carefully. Old straw has a lot of texture to it and has a chance of fraying. See, once you see take the paper off the face, you're, you're, you can't figure out what it is. So then this is why I have to reference the template because it's very hard to tell how the face goes. There we are. See, and I think that can't be right. Because it is. All right, there we go. Okay, that's the face. These small pieces and these old hands of mine. There. Oh, he's cute. Everything's going to butt up against each other. I was originally thinking, as I mentioned, some overlapping, but I don't know. Now I don't think I want things to overlap. But I feel like the hat, this has to overlap. It just won't look like a hat if it doesn't sit over the face. So we can't butt those two up against each other. I also feel like this needs to overlap a little. It will, I just feel like it won't have enough dimension if it doesn't. Well, look at him. All right, let's make sure he is where he is supposed to be. I have to stand up for this. And step back. Part of me feels like his neck is too long for his body. So perhaps these butt these butt up against each other. I hate moving them when I get them laid out like this. Because you feel like you never can get them back the right way. All right, come on, come on. Cooperate, Christopher. Lift it up so you guys can see the full. It's hard to see his boots, but they're there. Let me bring it down just a smidge. Okay, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think the bag, his bag, is going to have to lay over everything because... God, hopefully you're not finding me crazy for the amount of time it's taking me to get this situated. But if it's not right, there, that to me looks like a realistic neck length. Then his bag is going to have to lay over the top of everything. And now we can place our pins. Although, well, yes. You're going to again think I'm crazy because I will place pins and then take them back out. But you need to remove things in order to start stitching because other things will be in your way. So you can't leave everything. Hopefully I didn't just... You can't leave everything in place. But you want to temporarily get everything in place so that you feel like you have everything together correctly. I'm sure my hands are blurring everything, but. This sleeve cuff is really annoying me. It's causing me hassle. This is also annoying me because I feel like these things can't butt up against each other. I feel like they have to overlap. This is probably unheard of when it comes to wool applique, but I'm going to chart my own course. Those are going to look like that. They're going to half overlap, half not overlap. And now I probably could go back to the thinner. <laughs> Let's see. I think I've got to cut this down just a smidge. I wanted it to...
I'm hoping I'm not blocking everything and you can see everything. Okay, then we've got the mitten. So those two are gonna, going to end up like that. Okay. Let's get our pins in. Once I've made a decision, if I stick the pins in, I feel like there's no going back. I suppose some of you are probably thinking, why doesn't she iron these things out to before she films? But I don't know. It's just I'm offering these as a way to show my process. And maybe help you along the way with learning the process of how these things come together. Now, let me see. I like that. I feel like that's a reasonable distance for his neck, I guess. Boy, I wish you guys could answer me. And then we'll have you probably cannot see at all what I'm doing with this mitten in hand, but <coughs> I think he is a go. What do you guys think? Boy, you really can't see his feet in this screen, but He looks good to me. All right, I think we are ready to stitch. Now I am going to pull him down for just a minute so that I can make sure I'm looking at him correctly. He looks placed well on the background. As you can see, I have him centered. He's the same distance, just about the same distance, at least according to my finger rulers. I probably could have made his feet of the lighter material, but that's okay. So just about from the bottom of his foot, it's about two and a half. <coughs> Whoops. It's about two and a half from there. Not bad for, for a, uh, you know, guesstimate. Now it's farther from this side than it is from this side because of his bag, but if I was to put his body over here, it just would look wonky. He needs to be more centered and this bag is just going to be a little closer on this end, on this side, I should say. <clears throat> All right, now we can start stitching and that's always a, hmm, where do I begin type of thing with me. Oops. 
poked myself with a pin. Let me get this. Let me tidy up my workspace and we will be back.